Despite everything I've heard this evening, I think I have the best job in the world. I'm an art consultant. I get to build collections using art. It's like Lego blocks to small children, except for I do it in pictures. I get to build amazing collections like the one outside here. But what I want to talk to you about this evening is how you can get infected by the art bug. I was eight years old. I was in New York with my parents. I had a very beautiful dress on, I remember. I walked into a large museum, and in front of me, I saw this, Klaus Oldenburg's Floor Burger from 1962. It was vast. I had never seen anything like it. It was called a sculpture. What is a sculpture? Sculptures are supposed to be these big things made of metal. I looked at it. I was completely confused and transfixed. And you know what happened? It moved me. And it moved me not because it was important. I didn't know it was important. In fact, it's very important. Klaus Oldenburg is significantly important. The reason I loved it is it was so different. It smelt so different. So there was a shift in me, most definitely. And ever since, I've loved Americans and hamburgers. <laughs> Next is actually a rather nasty story of how I failed at my job. I was 16 years old, tremendously fashionable, I thought, full of art knowledge, I thought. I was walking down, um, I had 100 pounds in my back pocket. It was my first art investment, and remember, I am an art dealer. At 16 years old, I was not, I can assure you. So I'm walking down the Portobello Road, I open a shop door, I walk in there, enormous bins, I rumble through the bins, and I pluck out what I thought was a masterpiece. At least I thought it was what everybody else would think would be a total masterpiece. It was a beautiful Conte drawing of Jesus Christ. I mean, really beautifully drawn, in a perfect gold mirror. I knew if I bought it home, everybody would love it. I knew that if I bought it inexpensively, I could sell it really expensively. It was the perfect thing, I thought, that everybody else would think. So I made the acquisition. I negotiated hard. It was $35. I ran home with it. I presented it to my parents, who at the moment, or at that time, were, were hosting a rather significant um, art dealer. And they all looked a bit grim. They kind of looked at me. It was flat. I had no heart connection with this thing. I was assessing it by absolutely the wrong values. So those are the two moments where I recognized that one, I probably had a career in this, although that was a failure. And two, the art was really a disease. It was something that shifted you, that moved you, that you really had to be moved by it in order to engage with it. So very luckily, 10 years after that, at the beginning of my career, I had the great good fortune of meeting one of the greatest musicians I have ever known, and I'm sure many of you agree, it was David Bowie. And David was, of course, an artist himself, but he said, and it was so profound, he said that art was seriously the only thing you wanted to own, which was very good for me, because I'm an art consultant, but that it was profoundly nourishment to him. It made a difference every day. He woke up every day thinking and thinking about art and how he related to it. And this little guy was one of the first sculptures that I bought for him. So it was my first interaction with him. Iman, his stunning wife, comes into a gallery I'm working for. I'm rather bored, standing at the front desk. And she slipped over the counter a, a little drawing by David of this spectacular work, Teddy Boy, Teddy Girl, from 1956. Dancing Figures by Lynn Chadwick. This is a seminal work by him. It went to the Venice Biennale. I won't bore you with the art talk, but suffice to say, you can even see these dancing figures from 1958 in their frock coats represented what David really wanted to explore, which was the explosion of the art industry at the time. I knew it. I'm an epic nerd. I looked at that piece of paper and I said, come along, you're in the wrong gallery. She'd actually walked into the wrong gallery, luckily for me. So we strode across the road and we made the acquisition and Iman invited me to tea that day to meet David. So I got into my cab with the sculpture between my knees, ran off to you know, his hotel room and I saw him unveil it. And I saw his shift, what shifted him. He was looking at an object of extreme beauty, but he was connecting with it. There was a conversation he was having with it. No one else existed in the room. And I'm sure many of you have had experiences where you've looked at things that have shifted you like that. I think you need a few tips, or I think everyone needs a few tips about how to engage with art and how to get that shift. All of you, I hazard a guess, walked into this building right past this little dude. He's on the front desk right at the reception. 
This is an amazing sculpture. You know it. It's Auguste Rodin. It's the thinker. And there he sits. He's 14 and a half inches high. He's not beautifully eliminated. But I, you know, when you look at art, you've got to do two things. You've got to stand still and you've got to look. Look at this little guy. Tight fingers, relaxed hand, in thoughtful repose. Just walk around him, spend a moment with him, give him the time of day, for goodness sake. He's pretty extraordinary. And after you've looked at this object, and it can be any object, then think about how you feel when you see it. That's the other thing. It's a conversation. So you look at the thinker, and I tell you during COVID, he was pretty anxious, as I am today. At times of study, when my children look at him, they need to do their homework. But he has a majesty. He's telling us something. He's in perpetual conversation. He was cast in 1902. He still works today. That is the power of being shifted by art. So all I want you guys to do is to step up and walk out of this room. If you have no time tonight, I forgive you. I know it's our collection. My team put it together. Find something to look at. And as I say, it doesn't have to be something you love. In fact, a good thing is to look at things you don't like. Have that conversation. So look. So feel. And then after that, discover about the artist. Because I promise you, in my world, it can shift you. Thank you. <laughs>